Ladies and gentlemen, this is RPT season number eight, episode 94. We're creeping up on a hundo. I'm your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. Hello, everybody. Sass, it is Friday, October 6th, year of our Lord, 2021. Uh, big shout out to everybody that already picked up their hashtag FJB shirts. They're now available limited time at ChingoBling.com. Um, I do not want to end up in a gulag, so please support <laughs> please support uh while it's still legal um if anybody at, if the government comes knocking on my door i'm be like nah it stands for feria uh jarritos and beans or, or i could be like nah it stands for let's go brandon dot, 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 dot. yeah so yeah I, I will be in addison texas this weekend i don't even know how many shows we're doing it is a ton of shows we're there thursday through sunday i know someone's gonna start the uh let's go brandon chant i'm just throwing it out there if it doesn't start off organically, I'll make it happen. We already know it's going to start off organically. Yeah, we really hope. Um, especially all the patrons, all the Red Pill crew that's going to be out there. Addison, Texas, Addison Improv, this weekend, October 7th through the 10th. I am very shadow banned on social media. So please, please you know what, Rob? Thank you, man, for uh, really encouraging me and helping me with this podcast because... This may possibly be a way to work around all the algorithms and all that. Like, if we can get this podcast, like, to the next, next, next level, it's already booming. Yeah. To the next, next, next level, then I won't have to be stressing as much over, like, hey, man, no one's seeing my post. Like, some <laughs> of the comments are like, dude, do you even post anymore? I was like, I post every day. I haven't <laughs> been seeing your post. It's like, come on, man, work with me. Uh, so, anyway, after Addison, we hit San Antonio, Texas at the Laugh Out Loud comedy club october 14th through the 16th do not miss it i was just in san antonio so if you missed out this is your chance october 14th through the 16th raleigh north carolina 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 it's early y'all <laughs> raleigh north carolina october 24th one night only we're hitting the east coast don't miss it irvine california november 3rd hitting that west side we have november 5th through the 7th houston texas and Mark your calendars. I think we're going to announce Las Vegas and Salt Lake City before the year's Ooh, over. Ooh. You know what I'm talking about? Sin City. Yeah, somebody bring some weed, bring something. I know it's legal out there. Hook your boy up. Uh, lots to talk about, man. A lot going on. Uh, but again, just to reiterate, uh, support our free speech and support the content by signing up at patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales you get a whole enchilada you get all the dozens uh, a ton of content um people surprised we're like bro they're like hey when are you getting back on podcasting it's like bro we upload like five days out the week <laughs> pretty much non-political shows political shows uh all kinds of content and we may be having a show coming up real soon on rockfin so stay tuned on that actually i think we have a call with them coming up pretty soon Last but not least, Shell Shock CBD. Hit up shellshockcbd.com. Get you some gummies. Last night I took a CBD gummy with melatonin, mm. uh, courtesy of Shell Shock CBD. Use promo code Chingo and get ten percent off when you check out. Uh, CBD is good for you, man. Uh, y'all, y'all are smart. Y'all already know all the benefits. Um, but yeah, I feel bad because last night my wife was up with the baby, and I was on that melatonin. And then I got up early to help. And then I handed the baby back over, like when the, my wife came to the living room to check up on us. And then I went to lay back down. And then she came to the room with the baby. She's like, so you came back over here to like take a nap? I thought you came over here to do something. I thought you handed me the baby. <laughs> She's like, I thought you handed me the baby to come do something. I was like, I am doing something. I'm getting ready because Rob will be here. <laughs> and this is my way of getting ready. Does she, do you have your, your routine that you still cook, like at night as far as like your ZMA, you're able to like chill out at, at a certain time? I just ran out of ZMAs. Um, but yeah, we just, I mean, these days, bro, with, with the newborn, it's just kind of like, like I said, the the bulk of the work is on my wife. She's the one with the, the milk and the breast and all that. Um, I just eat her milk supply cookies <laughs> that she baked for her. So my milk supply is up, ladies and gentlemen. Um, also, the newsletter, chingobling.com, real easy. There's a pop-up. Join the newsletter because, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, he, he don't want to share the data. Uh, you know, we're over here busting our ass, posting all this content on Instagram and all this. And then whenever they want, they could kick us off, ban us, shadow ban us. And we have no way of keeping in touch and letting you guys know where we're going to be and what we're up to. So the newsletter is growing, chingobling.com. 
Sign up. All right. On today's show, Fauci's power hungry message. Number two, a lot of hoaxes. There's a lot of hoaxes out there and hoaxes can be very dangerous and very divisive. So we got to address them. Number three, the media matrix is glitching. Whoo, that's a big one. And number four is and more, <laughs> <laughs> which there is a lot more. Yeah, there I, is. I even have some additional notes. Good, good, uh, we'll, good. We'll see if we can get to it all. Oh, yeah. We got to. Well, since you're going to be out of town, our recording days have turned into a recording day. So we're knocking out a lot of podcasts today, which, by the way, I don't know if I can ever do a show again without whatever this is. OK, I hooked you up with some espresso, brother. That is Cafe Bustelo brewed out of a uh, Bialetti. That's what they call them. Is that what that little thing is? The little silver one. Yeah. Yeah, the silver one. So um, that's. I think that's only one shot. So I gave the other half to Marisol. That this is the way to make coffee. Like okay. this is delicious because it has that little foam at the top. What yeah. do you like about it, man? It's strong. You can taste okay. how strong. You told me you gave it to me. Like, hey, that's. Uh, it's not a lot, but it's powerful, right? Yeah, it's good. You yeah. take the sip. It's smooth. You uh -huh. can feel a little bit of like the sit, like a little bit of the acid, but it's not overwhelming. And then it just kind of like hits. The, 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 the caffeine chemical hits your brain, bruh. A little bit of dopamine. Whenever you have, whenever Chingo has his coffee shop in a couple of years, when he's retired, <laughs> yeah. just, hey, that might be sooner than later because <laughs> I have been ghetto and immature for a long time, making a lot of ratchet ass content, dude. Every time Facebook sends me a reminder of like, here's what you posted <laughs> in 2013, your, your memories. I'm, I'm even like, man, my voice sounds different. It was must have been my tonsils. Were my tonsils out yet? Um, yeah, it's just yeah. you did sound like you were 15 for a long time. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was the tonsils, bro. That makes sense. When you told that story, I had no, I don't think you ever, maybe you did talk about it before, but tonsils. Yeah, I didn't know it was to that degree where you're like, oh, I was shaking and I needed to go to the emergergency room. Yeah, it, it, it took all the bass out of my voice. See, now you know what I'm talking about. Oh, now he's got yeah. the, that's called the boom effect I have on your yeah, voice. Yeah, this, this is a red pill tamales. I got your lower bottom up there. Oh, watch out now. <laughs> Fauci's power hungry message. So basically, Fauci hopped on TV. And he said, it's time to give up your individual right of making your own decision. You saw that video, right? I saw a video when he said, you know, I think the standard regimen right now is going to be, you know, the best way is going to be three shots. That's now considered but fully. Are, that I'm, one? I'm going to pull it up. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm going to be at the San Antonio show on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, just to let you know. Anybody listening, hit me up. Don't be weird if you are weird. I mean, be nice at least. Society. Yeah, because there's a lot of people. Are there. Where's Rob? Society. <laughs> Reaping all the benefits of being a member of society, you have a responsibility to society. And I think each of us, particularly in the context of a pandemic that's killing millions of people, you have got to look at it and say there comes a time when you do have to give up what you consider your individual right <laughs> of making your own decision for the greater good of society. What the f So, I try to give these people the benefit of the doubt. Like, I do too. I, I, tr I really try to be like, look, man, it's a pandemic. People are dying, and they're just truly trying their best to kind of protect everybody, mm -hmm. right? However, here's my problem. If this, va if this shot was truly effective and it truly knocked it out, killed it, and really protected you to where you're not able to spread it, which you are with the jab. If it were truly like a good, effective, non-leaky, durable jab that like literally stopped this thing in its tracks and, and, and for the sake of society and health and the greater good and the community and this and that, you're actually able to protect your neighbor and you then can be, I guess, I don't want to say you can now be looked at as um irresponsible for not participating in this thing but it's leaky it's not durable and it does not stop the the uh, the virus in its tracks you can still spread it and furthermore not to mention that this dude Fauci is like a bureaucrat I mean, can he be fired or not? Is he is this motherfucker deep state? Like that's the crazy part too, right? He's the highest, one of the highest paid officials that was not elected, and he'd been there since like what the eighties, probably before that. Yeah, I mean the, before the AIDS yeah. issues. Yeah, I mean the AIDS epidemic thing or whatever. They, it's an endemic now, I guess. But um, I don't know, man. Like I like that you put it that way. That you try to give him the benefit of the doubt because I do the same thing. Just because you don't want to immediately be cynical, right? Yeah. But then it gets to a point where it goes back to whatever it is, Harlan's razor or whatever, where it's like you don't attribute malice to what, you know, could just be stupidity. Stupidity. 
you have to think, and we'll, I didn't even put it on there, but the, the new Merck treatment, right? The new Merck pill. The, pill? the yeah, red pill. I heard pill. it's like $2,000 $2, a pill, some shit. I heard anything from 700 to a few thousand, yeah. And whereas I... And does it work? Well, I mean, <laughs> again, well, I don't, this is on YouTube, but uh. people were like, you know, they made the original horse goo that they said wouldn't work and it's not for this. And yeah. now they probably added some caffeine to this thing and said, hey, it's the new version. Yeah, they had to hate on the horse goo. Yeah, but to go back to it, like, you want to give them benefit of the doubt, but at a certain point, it's all it's for profit, it's for money, it's for who's going to, you know, make the most out of this. It's not really all the time super like I'm being a philanthropist or I'm being like just a really good-hearted person that's trying to figure this out. Yeah, like I said, man, like, like for example, Scott Adams, he always does a good job of like making sure you're not being cynical and making sure that like the logic of things you know i guess what is it the razor harlem's razor whatever yeah harlem Uh, but yeah so like i really really try to look at these types of little speeches from these people as um as kind of like okay let's not just assume that they're out here pushing something and and they're actually trying to like like on some conspiracy conspiracy shit like they want to take away your freedoms and your rights like i try not to make that my first even with Bill Gates, even, right. dude, early on during cafecito time, I'd be going, li- me and my soul would be going live, you know, on the porch and people in the comments are like, man, motherfucking Bill Gates, this is a pandemic and this and that. And, and I'd be like, well, he don't need money. Like, what is he, why, what are you saying he's doing this for? But um, I also heard a Fauci speech where he said, now, you know, the, the regimen's got to be three shots. You got to get your third shot. And that's considered now fully vaccinated. And, and my thing is this. Bro, are y'all factoring in herd immunity? Like, are we still talking about... Are you, are you factoring in antibodies? Number two, you're talking about all these people dying. So many people dying. So many people dying. Okay. How many of these folks are obese? How many of these folks are, like, elderly? Comorbidities? You know what I'm saying? Because you, you're making it sound like anybody could get it. You know, kids falling out. And, and I guess the argument with trying to jab up all the children is so that... They're not little spreaders, I guess, but you can still spread it. Yeah. I'm so confused. Like the whole fucking, it's like that meme of the dude from, I think it's a sunny in Philadelphia. It's like hella strings. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. That motherfucker's funny. <laughs> I love but like, Charlie. It looks like that, um, like that meme where he's just like, you know, almost like yeah. leftists trying to figure out how somehow, some way, a leaky, not durable, low efficacy rate jab is somehow going to be the key back to your freedoms. That's where it gets iffy. Like, not to mention this shit was made in the lab and probably leaked on purpose, right? But now, all of a sudden, bitch, we was just free in 2019 when the shit was spreading in Wuhan. They knew. That's why they were ordering, P- they were ordering PCR tests like... They say back as early as July or August of 2019. They, right. were, they were already like, uh, you know. And then, you know, of course, Papi Trompas was like, it came from the lab. I suspect, you know, shame on the World Health Organization. You know, it's a big cover up. Why the fuck? He ain't fire Fauci. Mm-hmm. Trump, it's a couple things, man. It's a couple things you could have did. You ain't did. And I'm not a fan of. Like, you should have been fired Fauci. If Biden fired Fauci, I'd have to get, I'd have to get Brandon some credit <laughs> let's go brandon dun, 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 dun. i'd have to give him some credit if biden fires fauci i might have to be like you know what he did he did something it's hanlon's razor by the way never attribute to malice to that which you could adequately be explained with stupidity um yeah man but they're not, that's not happening that's their homeboy just like millie's their homeboy and it's just like they're all part of this plan and and they're in power right now so they get to do whatever the fuck they want to do bro not to mention Fauci, we on your ass, bro. Not to mention, when he was in the White House, situation room, right? When the shit's hitting the fan. In the like, war room. Yeah, when it's like, hey, guys, what the fuck is this virus brewing over there? Mm-hmm. Do we shut down flights from China? What are we doing? Do we put together a team? Who's addressing the press and the media? What do we? How is our messaging going to be to the American public? Can we get a vaccine ASAP? What's the likelihood that we can get it done ASAP? Not once. Here's my one of my biggest issues. Not once did Dr. Anthony Fauci, Mister, I'll just call him Mister. Fuck yes. it, you ain't a doctor right now. Not once did he raise his hand and say, uh, "Boss, um, hey man, it, it's a coronavirus, right? Yup. Uh, it's coming from China, right? Yup. 
Is it the Wuhan area? Yup. Okay. I got some partners over there that scientists at a lab that we kind of funded. You know, we kind of helped fund. And it's coronaviruses, and they know a lot about it. And we were studying them with bats and shit. The uh, doctor, uh, Ying Mang Li, Doctor Ying Mang Li, she, the uh, they call her the bat lady. She was bringing the bats from Hunan province, a thousand miles away. I believe it's like southeast China or something. And she was bringing them over here. She would go in the caves, try to find the coronavirus, and then he probably wouldn't use the words weaponize, but you know they were studying them. With the spike proteins to see how they can make them, uh, you know, affect humans or whatever. Like, not once did he raise his hand and be like, hey, man, um, I, man, I'm sorry, dude, but it might have came out the lab. Not once. Yeah, I don't not know. Once. I don't know what it is, but it is, like, enticing to follow the rabbit holes of these stories that are like, Bill Gates this and, you know, uh, George Soros that. Mm -hmm. Because... A lot of pieces of the puzzle to come together and it just doesn't make sense, right? Or it makes you it makes your ears perk up. Like, I don't want to completely switch subjects, but you mentioned Bill Gates earlier. Like, why he's got a lot of money? Like, why does he want to do this? What's kind his of motivation? Stuff? What's the motive, right? Yeah. Same thing with like George Soros. I, I saw somebody yesterday sent me something about um, he had given or donated like half a billion dollars, like five. I think it was it was either five hundred thousand or whatever it was, a lot of mm -hmm. money, to a group that was campaigning against bringing back police enforcement in Austin. He basically funded the defund the police, like people that were campaigning for keeping the police defunded. Uh -huh. And then yesterday, they uh, uh, yet last night or whatever, they had, Austin PD had said that they were going to stop responding to non-emergency calls. Uh -huh. And that that could, and then they said, which could consist of you know, burglary, theft of, and it was like home, business, car, whatever. Those are considered non-emergencies, and it's just like why and then the comments to that thread were like well, george Soros doesn't want this to happen or wants that to happen it's like why is this guy who has all this money and then i've heard stories where like he's just an evil man that wants to you know see the world fall and or be under like the thumb of his ideas or something mm. i don't really know but it's it's interesting conspiracy well, shit. well yeah you know um the democrat i believe she's a state senator or something cinema yeah know? yeah um yeah yeah so she this lady i don't know too much about her but she i guess was voting against some immigration thing or they the left labeled her the problem almost like a democrat rhino mm -hmm. a dino um kristen cinema yeah so they basically labeled her like yo bitch you're the hold up on this immigration thing or whatever so then certain groups like lucha these little like kind of radical leftist activist type people who were funded by your boy jorge soros mm. That boy had put some funding over there in these groups, and all of a sudden, they're harassing her on, on a plane. They, like, film themselves getting all up in her grill, and then they chased her into a restroom where she had to lock herself in the stall, and they're like, build back better. Pass the bill. Did build you see back. those videos? Because uh, I got them pulled up. Yeah. So let's go ahead and segue into that subject, because fuck it. This is super interesting to me, because... Yeah. Uh, a lot of people obviously don't like this lady. Like you said, I don't know a whole bunch about her, yeah. but just some of the stuff that I've briefly read, like, okay, all right. But this is this is them. This is crazy, dude. <laughs> this is her. And I guess she teaches at uh, ASU yeah. uh -huh. in, um, what you call it, Arizona? I'll be back. Sit down. We want to talk to you real quick. Can we talk to you real quick? Slender down. We want to talk to you real quick. Now. The, um, right now is a real moment that our people need in order for us to be able to talk about what's really happening. We need a Build Back Better plan right now. Build Back Better plan. <laughs> we, we knocked on doors. We need solutions. The Build Back Better plan we has the solutions that what we the need. Fuck? We knocked on doors for you to get you elected. And just how we got you elected, we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us. We need 7 million citizenship for 7 million. We need the Build Back Better There's a dude right filming now. in the women's restroom. He's like outside around the corner. Barely. My name is Blanca. I was brought here to the United States when I was three years old. And in 2010, my grandparents both got deported because of SB 1070. And I'm here because I definitely These poor believe people that we need a There's stall. other people in the stall. Yes. My grandfather they can't even shit in peace. Ago, and I was not able to go to Mexico and visit him because there is no pathway to citizenship. First and of all. And if we have the opportunity to pass it right now, then we need to do it because there's millions of undocumented people just Blanc. like me who share the same story or even worse things that happen to them because of SB 1070 and because of anti-immigrant legislation. 
And this is the opportunity to pass it right now. And we need you to hold, we need to hold you accountable. To First of all, told us this little girl been here since she was three. And she sounds like that. Why your accent still Dude, so that's, that's the first thing I said. I don't want to sound like mercy. a hater. I don't know. We got like 20 more seconds. That you were going to pass when we knocked on doors for you. It's not right. What should you just say? America first. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I need you to stand by workers. Lots of people who are like me. Okay, first of all, notice that they keep saying the Build Back Better plan. We need to build back better this. We need pathway to citizenship. Build back better, build back better. Okay. That's also a 10 year plan, by the way, when it was proposed. The Build Back Better? Yeah. And it's like a globalist thing because Trudeau, Biden, all of them in unison made it like part of their fucking um their little campaign slogan. It's their rally cry. And it's and but it's actually uh, I guess messaging from what is it? World Economic Forum, mm -hmm. Party of Davos. So yeah. It's just Blanca and all these young Latinos being used like you know, they're like giving their stories about my grandmother passed away and we, there's not a path to citizenship. And because of SB, whatever, we can go over there and woo -dee woo -dee woo and da, da 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 And it's like, I feel your pain and your struggle and all that, but um, it sounds like you're a pawn. It sounds like they're using you to go and harass these people. So here's the, here's the big story, I think, real quick. Here's, I feel like, the big danger. The big danger is... I don't know what the term is, but you're you're weaponizing these activists to force harass. Remember when uh, I think Maxine Waters like get in their face, like mm -hmm. if anybody da, 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 get in their face It's basically like we saw some of this with Antifa. We saw some of this with the BLM tactics. Right. So they're basically it's like mob rule. They want to force you to do shit. They want to make you do shit. They want to harass you the way they surrounded. Uh, what's his name? Rand Paul. Mm hmm out there in D.C. And then I think it was Peter Ducey from Fox asked Biden at the podium, hey, man, they did this stuff to this lady. They followed her in the restroom. Um, what do you think about that? He, what, did you see it's that? It's part of the process. You know, this is part of the process. What? Part of the process. Unless you have Secret Service around you. Yeah, he's like, they pretty much do it to anybody unless you got Secret Service around you. Part of the process. So you're saying... This little old ass man, bro. This man been in government. I don't know how they bamboozled y'all to vote for this dude. This man been in government how many years? 50 years? Damn near. It's 48th year, I think. This man been crooked as a roach leg. Yeah, we went through that whole political, you know, uh, the political article, the Biden Inc. Crooked as a roach leg. Yeah, how much, bre how you a public servant, public official, and you worth multi, multi millions of dollars. You ain't did shit. Everything you've been associated with politically has just been whack. A lot of times when we're talking about stuff like this, it, I feel like I'm like the 14, 15 year old liberal ish kind of kid that you don't know, you know, what's what, right? You just kind of see what's on social media. And this is when social media was like barely popping off. But you have a lot of like, like you said, I feel your struggle, feel your pain, especially when you have people that came from Mexico or immigrant family mm -hmm. or parents or whatever. But here's the thing that would maybe help this situation is instead of Blanca and these people rallying and attacking people in the restroom saying we need to pass this legislation or whatever is... First, coming to this uh, mutual agreement that America is great, mm -hmm. it's better than the alternative, which is, in this case, Mexico. Name any country, because you don't want to go because you don't want to get stuck there, right? So you need to, we need to figure out how you can get these papers in order. We need to figure out how the country can come together and pass legislation as a community so that you're not scared to go visit your grandparents because you know that, man, if I get stuck over there, I don't want to get stuck in Mexico. I want to be in the United States. Yeah. Let's start there instead of shitting on America all the time. Well, I mean, I didn't hear the the girl Blanca shit on America in this clip in particular, but you're probably right. Well, that SP that 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 bill that she's referencing, do you remember? This was from a decade ago. Uh -huh. Where which one? 1070 or yeah, the 1071 was. They called it the Show Me Your Papers bill. <laughs> okay, that's what they named it, right? And at the time, Arizona had passed the most stringent um, anti-immigration reform or law in the United States. Basically, if you got stopped by police, they could ask you for your papers for your legal status, right? 
And I, it was supposed to be one of those things where like they just, they're supposed to check. And if you didn't have your paper, you had to have them on you at all times. If you didn't, it was a misdemeanor. And if you were illegal, then I guess maybe deportation was as far as they could take it, which is extreme. But um, th then it turned to like, well, the people are profiling. The cops are being really extremely uh, unfair with this this power that they had to just ask people that look like illegals for the papers, right? I mean, right. You can't be asking people for the papers, right? right. New York? Right. <laughs> exactly, right? But if you committed a crime or they pulled you over, they had to write to ask you for your legal status. So that's that's kind of one of those things where like it, it turned into this, it's racist, it's, it's profiling and like, all right, but you know, that was just in Arizona and it turned into a, a national thing, a national debate, which I understand. But what's always rooted in these type of debates is America is racist. It's, and it's, it's terrible, but they, but they're fighting to get people here and they're fighting to keep themselves here. It's like, well, let's work on the status issue. Let's work on the messaging, right? What's the optics of the whole thing? America's racist and it's terrible or it's awesome. And I want to, I want to work on getting my family here and myself getting established here. That's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to, um, uh... I guess we're going to keep an eye on it to see if they're going to try to use this as a tactic. You know, yeah. these radical uh, activists harassing people. This lady done got harassed on a plane. So oh, there's another one, too. And, and she, uh, throughout Trump's full term, voted uh, on Trump type policies a quarter of the time, like 25 plus, plus percent of the time. Uh, Senator Cinema Sin voted with Trump. That's not a ton, but it's a lot more than a lot of the, the Democratic Party had. But this was in the same day as this restaurant incident. Same day? Same day. So they're just like, I mean, damn, lady, wear a mask. How do you, how do you? They showed up at her door. It was a private event somewhere. Yeah, so that goes on for another minute. Okay, some of these young Latinos got too much time on their hands, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I kind of see, like, maybe they just don't know no better, man. They're young, and they, they probably just think that, you know, I don't know their specific situations. Like, maybe... Some of them are like, hey, I should have a path to citizenship because X, Y, Z. I don't know. Are they considered DACA or Dreamers? I'm sure some of them are, yeah. Okay, so I don't know, man. It's just my biggest thing about it is how many more times will this lady get harassed where it might factor into the way she votes? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and then they're just going to multiply that and do that. That becomes the fucking game plan where it's like, hey, George Soros is funding these uh, organizations like Lucha mm -hmm. in Arizona. And they can, you know, these kids maybe truly in their heart feel like these SB 1070 is like super, super bad. And then they find these people like, what's the name? Cinema. Yeah. And they, they do this shit. And then Biden talking about part of the process so yeah anyway. like she's one of the first i think openly bisexual senators she's also like a part of the lgbt whatever community so she's like as progressive as it, as it could get not immune not yeah immune. they will eat their own no matter what and um yeah man she one of the most one of the biggest criticisms of her too is that she may not even want to run again so they're just like maybe she's just being malicious malicious i use quotes uh in voting against you know the reconciliation bill or whatever the fuck's on the floor right now just to just because she's not gonna run again she doesn't care so i feel like a lot of these people like you said they might get pushed into voting a certain way or they might just get pushed out of office which might be a better thing right maybe you'll get a better replacement or you might get a, a worse replacement i don't know i don't know man it just seems a little dangerous it's like antifa style uh bullshit all right so moving on some hoaxes a black woman is accused of posing as a kkk member leaving threatening notes for her black neighbors yeah. So a black lady leaving scary notes to her black neighbors pretending she's KKK. Who was, what was one of the most recent ones where we saw the similar kind of story? Because there's been like two or three of them. Do you remember? It was, it was another one of those things where, oh, it was the kid. It was a kid in, in school who wrote like racist things on the restroom walls. And it was a black kid. And it was kid. a black kid. Yeah, man. Um, I think because the media and, and all this like, democrat leftist propaganda pause that real quick yeah i was making sure there wasn't an ad there okay yeah so all this like leftist propaganda that like america's racist america's bad white people are racist systemic racism uh white supremacy all this shit that even the department of homeland security is like the number one threat is white boys you know look at what they did on january 6th look at these white boys it's like bitch half of them was y'all the other <laughs> half was y'all's informants 
You know what I'm saying? And the other third, hey, how many halves? Yeah. And the other half, <laughs> y'all didn't even bring in, like the Oath Keeper. So I think when people do this type of shit, like even the noose thing, remember on college campuses they were finding nooses? That was a hoax. During the Bubba Wallace thing? Or? No. Like, this is a whole nother noose. This is like years ago. I don't remember. To the point where Cat Williams even wore a noose around his neck at the BET Awards or something, and he even did a whole bit about it, basically saying... Bitch, a noose is just an object. I'm not afraid of the noose yeah, type of thing. A, it's a tie, if you think about I it. I mean, he wore it as a tie. I am, yeah, I'm sure. He, he that's wore what a tie a, is. He wore a noose as a tie and just kind of making fun of the whole thing. It, dude, I'm telling you, Cat Williams is on a whole nother level. He really like, is. Like, he be understanding, like, he breaks down politics in his jokes. All right, so we're about to see this uh, black woman accused of posing as KKK. Yeah, this is from the New York Post. ...of infecting fear into the hearts of her neighbors is expected to turn herself in this week. Investigators say Teresa Lucas wrote and placed threatening notes into multiple mailboxes. The letters claim to be from a white male member of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> Police found evidence that linked Lucas to what was going on, and she's now facing eight months of making terroristic threats. Eight counts. Wow. Now you about to be sitting in a cell with your goofy ass for uh, eight months. Well, okay. Here's my here's one of my questions. Besides the whole mental health aspect of this, sure. What did your black neighbors do to piss you off? For you, and then how did you come up with that? Like, okay, my black neighbors or my neighbors are pissing me off. I was like, what was her goal? Was her goal like I need it look? I need to make it look like what? What state was this? Oh, I think it was Georgia. Okay, it's almost like she was like, how do I make it look like there's a racist white man in this neighborhood? It's like, what was your motivation? What's the point? What's the goal? Wait, did you watch the movie Karen? Fuck no. <laughs> you if, did? No. If I did, I'd, I'd fucking make fun of it just I, to I see. I think my soul said she watched it, I think. She probably, yeah. She, okay. she, I'm telling you, man, she'd be up with the baby. She, yeah, you're right. Because she watched Squid Games, too, she told me. I don't know if you saw that. But the reason I bring up Karen is because I don't know what her, that I think, was it like, was she the HOA person? And she was harassing this black couple that moved in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Maybe this lady just like, what if her neighbors had like Trump flags and they had like, they wore like MAGA hats and shit and she just wanted to send a message to the. You're saying what if the black lady was trying to send a message to her black neighbors? Yeah. I have no idea what the fucking, like, this is so weird. Yeah. But. My takeaway, besides the mental health aspect and whatever personal beef she had on her cul-de-sac, my thing is this. How many people are going to see this story and not know that the hoax aspect? Yeah. Like, it's just going to further perpetuate this idea. To me, it's a false idea that America is inherently racist, white supremacy is systemic, and the whole problem with critical theory and postmodernism and this Marxist, neo-Marxist way of looking at things is you could literally find racism anywhere you look for it. Like, that's the whole point of this postmodernist critical theory shit is where you could find a way to look at anyone or anything and justify it in your head that it's racist. Like, anything. Yeah. Anything. Like, a McDonald's commercial. Like, anything. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Hey. Like, why you gotta sound like a brother when he's saying that? Like, I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like there is racism out there and there is systemic racism out there and it comes in the form of teachers' unions, our educational system. Think about it, man. If, you, if you're, if you're um, whatever age, let's just say you're a 40-year-old a, a black man in Houston, right? And you find yourself on tough times. Maybe you didn't go to college or something, but your high school didn't teach you any trades. So now you're living in a neighborhood and you're living in a society where like you don't know how to weld. You're not a carpenter. You don't know how to be a plumber. And you didn't go to college. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And they already told you from the time you were little that the world is set up against you. This is a white man's world. And, and it's like, meanwhile, you've seen all the immigrants. Coming in, getting all, doing all the house building and carpentry and doing sheetrock. El chiro, de la compadre. You got a wide open border. So you got, you know, all these other folks driving down wages. You keep voting Democrat, but in your head, you're living in this racist world. Yeah, you want to backtrack to the racism. The fact that the high schools took the trades out and nobody taught you how to do certain things. And now you're in a situation where you're like, uh-oh. 
guess right i guess it was racism's fault well in a way it was it was the educational system how important do you think today in 2021 and today is uh october 5th 2021 how important is it for a young someone to have a bachelor's degree in the united states how important well um from a personal perspective i mean I can care less if my daughters have a bachelor's. Yeah. Because to me, a bachelor's degree, nine times out of ten, just represents debt and represents uh, they brainwashed you with some wokeism. Yeah. So to me, a bachelor's degree by modern day settings is very dangerous. Very dangerous. I mean, arguably, there's probably some good colleges out there where you can um, leave unscathed and still leave with your head on, screwed on right, and you're not walking out quoting the 1619 project and you over here looking like john logazamo blaming everything on fucking the white man <laughs> blaming everything on the white man and racism get off the boo-boo man it is 2021 yeah I, I like the videos there's been a lot of like rappers and entertainers i can't think of any off the top of my head by name maybe they're not like a-listers but regardless who are like there's ain't no white man held me down like look at my position look what i've accomplished you, you think some white person just said you can't do that and therefore i didn't accomplish it like no what's wrong yeah. with you <clears throat> yeah there's clips out there where um basically conservative red pill people they'll take like a little wayne interview or like a little boosie answer from an interview and they really don't have to twist up the context it'll, it'll oh kevin gates even Kevin Gates is very wise. Like his his answers, his interviews are always like, God damn, this dude, like, has motherfuckers deep. Like he broke it down. Like Kevin Gates says, there's a clip, right? And it'll be like, why we're talking about white, the, you know, the white man this and the white man want to kill us and the white man this. He's like, that's not a thing anymore. He's like, you don't really see, despite the media, I'm paraphrasing, right? Despite what the media is telling you, he's like, it don't be a white man laying up under your car, waiting for you to get home, hiding in your bushes, waiting for you to get home. He's like, it's us killing us. That's the, re that's the reality. Don't nobody want to bring up black on black crime. You're not allowed to because why? It doesn't fit the leftist agenda. For sure. It doesn't fit the leftist narrative that it's all the white man's fault. And you're not allowed to say, uh, could we look at black on black crime? No, motherfucker. It's like, I thought black lives matter. Yeah, we're not, you know, we're talking about police brutality right now. And you over here, and it's like, okay, so do the, so a little kid shot in a drive-by in Chicago, that life don't matter? Well, of course it does. But, okay, so a black cop dying at the hands of a, a looter, does his life matter? Well, we're not talking about that right now. Um you know, it is what it is, man. That's the world we living in. Do not get bamboozled. Yeah. Don't fall for the okie doke. I've said it for a long time, but I feel like it's unfortunate a lot of people don't have the time. <clears throat> Let's just say prior to the pandemic where you were forced to stay home, right? You were forced to do things completely <clears throat> different from your regular life. But before that, you didn't have the time to sit and think and maybe read a lot or listen to things that were going to be self-developing in a sense you don't have to it doesn't have to be self-help but to just give you different thoughts and perspective on things right if you did or if, if americans did because we're so go 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 we're constantly on the hustle on the grind or whatever you ha you lack a lot of like empathy a lot of the times you lack compassion maybe and it's always that person's against one of my you know beliefs or against one of my ways of thinking so they're bad or they're the enemy right if more Americans were, and this sounds, again, super woo-woo and like lefty Larry type of shit, but if more people did have an open mind to come together on subjects, you could then accomplish more after the fact. Like once everyone's, I hate to use this example, but people were posting those videos of like BLM and like MAGA folk marching against the, uh, the mandates, right? The jab mandates or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, both groups could probably argue that each side did terrible shit at one point or another, maybe just in one city or at one instance, not everywhere all the time. But if those factions of people came together, you know, you could accomplish a lot more than burning down cities and creating an insurrection. <clears throat> well, the problem is you have Facebook <clears throat> and the algorithm who, for the sake of profit, want to divide, which I can't wait to talk about that, um, that whistleblower. But um, the problem is people are operating from a starting point of I've been told that America's racist from the time I was in first fucking grade. From the time you're in kindergarten, especially now more than ever, the CRT stuff. People, by the time, check this out. By the time you're a 30-year-old black woman participating in BLM, how many years 
of hoaxes, media hoaxes, media training, like like uh, movies uh, showing things a certain way. Uh, people constantly telling you that you ain't gonna make it because it's the white man's world. The game, the game is rigged. It's set up against you. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many times does Oprah have to tell you that everything's racist and Ti? All these millionaires, LeBron James telling you uh, black people being hunted by cops. So I agree with you, man. I think um, we can be a lot further because look, at the end of the day, people all want the same shit. Exactly. They just all want to like. Make some money, take care of their family, make sure their kids are good, everybody's safe, grandma's good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just want to have you little, you know, just the American dream, your slice of the pie. But oddly enough, people are more concerned about how you get there than the result. Like, people want it done their way, right? Certain people want you to get to that result the way I said to get there. And what do you mean? Go, what do you mean? Who's they? Whoever's the opposition, right? In this case, right now, let's just talk about federally. We have a left leaning administration. And a lot of people that are on the right don't like the way they're going about achieving their goals. Which, if, if we say that everybody wants the same thing, you want health, happiness, you know, you want, you want health, wealth, any kind of pursuit of happiness that available to you in the United States. But the left has this socialist, communist kind of approach to mm -hmm. a lot of things where people on the right are like, that's not the right way to get to health, happiness, and pursuit of whatever. So they're the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. When Trump was in office, booming economy, low immigration, blah, blah, blah. But, that, yet, but yet the media... Right, was saying racist, 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 racist. So as a black, sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. So, as a, so as a black person, I know, I know it sounds like I'm just going in on, on black community, right? But my house is no different. But and I'm just gonna say my point, and I'm gonna hand it back off because I cut you off. But like from a strategy standpoint, if the media got the hell out the way, and Facebook algorithm and all that div divisiveness got out the way, then maybe you could see, oh, Trump's trying to help the economy. He's trying to suppress inflation. That affects all of us. And the media and everybody, these celebrities are lying to me. I can make something out of myself, but Trump's trying to help us. How? People always say, what did he do for the black community? What did he do for the brown community? Well, by having a tight border and promoting growth and, you know, the wage growth and all that is suppressed inflation. That benefits everybody. Well, to just get back to that original point is people are worried about how we're getting there and not necessarily the, the end result. If we could all... We, People on both sides always say that. Everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants the same thing. And then if I said that to a lefty, they'd be like, yeah, you're right. If they said that to me, they'd be like, yeah, you're right. Okay, what's the best path to get there? Well, A, B, C. Well, I think it's X, Y, Z. And just because you disagreed on that one point, you can never get to that end result because everyone's focused on my way is the right way. Communism's never been done right. Socialism's never been tried right. What are you talking about? That, for instance, is one thing that you can disprove, but they just want to ignore it. Or there's enough spin in the media where people continue to ignore it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. it, it goes back to miseducation. Uh, Lauren Hill had a great album title called The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. I think she only did one album ever. But I think she was ahead of her time using that title because people are being miseducated. Everything from celebrities that are regurgitating shit because they want to be Obama's friend and be invited to the party. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have the media... Basically, you know. Well, you do you have? I'm sorry to interrupt you now, but you're saying something that it's kind of in the same uh, subject of one of Denzel's like famous quotes about the media. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Where he's like, "If I watch the news, I'm misinformed. If I don't watch the news, I'm uninformed, mm -hmm. or vice versa." Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know who else is real good at at, um, at that is Morgan Freeman. Oh yeah. Morgan Freeman has some viral quotes where they're like, "How do you think?" It's always oh, a, yeah, yeah. a white person asking it's him, like I, Pierce Morgan or something. Yeah, it's like, oh, "What can we do about racism?" He's like. Stop talking about it. I'm a man. You're a man. Let's move on. Yeah. But but racism, it's like Morgan Freeman gets it. I don't give a damn what color you are. I don't give a damn if you a leftist white woman, you a black dude, or you a Mexican woman. Like, what Morgan Freeman is telling you is basically like, listen, y'all, you got the American dream. You got to put in work, have a good strategy, a good life strategy, a variety of skills, a talent stack, you know, on some Scott Adams shit. And you can make something of yourself. How, but, but if you fall into this victimhood mentality of, you know, it's because the white man is and Republicans that and racism and racism and racism and rape. We don't really, to my knowledge, bro, we don't see a whole bunch of, this is my perspective. I don't necessarily see a whole bunch of racist white people. Everywhere I look, I don't see 
white people hating. I mean, I'm sure there are some that can't stand Mexicans, can't stand immigrants. Sure. I hate this. I hate that. <laughs> you know, white is right. You know, white power. I'm sure they're out there. But I think it's a fucking super minuscule boneheaded minority. You know, it's like not that many races. I'm, I don't know how many, I can't quantify how many races white people are out there. But if there are, how many of them have power over you? How many of them just live in a trailer somewhere and they're just yelling? They're just mentally ill and they live in the woods and they're just like, white power! And having a fucking meeting with four friends. And it's like, until they actually put that shit in motion and victimize somebody, like, they're not the ones hiring people. They're not corporate America. They don't have power over you like that. This is one of the subjects that you can beat like a, you know, like a dead horse or to a dead horse or however the phrase goes, because mm-hmm. it begs repeating. It never is never going to get old. I don't think in our lifetime because it's been so ingrained in a lot of the generation's mentality. Brainwash. Right? Totally. And everyone's guilty of this. Everyone. And it's a very unpopular opinion, but there's a lot of shows on the left or right or even the ones that are like moderate that do the exact same thing. I hate to ever be guilty of it, but I'm sure I have. Right. But let me give you an example. Crystal and Sagar from Now Breaking Points, then The Hill Rising, are a great show. Rogan always touts them as being the best. They're very moderate. It's a lefty and a righty, and they're, they're discussing what the news is like the, sh- the news on TV should. I totally agree. But they're guilty, too, of it as well. There was one video from years ago where Candace Owens, maybe she was just kind of getting her feet wet and being in the public eye. And it might have been shortly before or after she was on Rogan. And she took a lot of shit for, for talking about climate. Do you remember that? Candace Owens talking about climate? Yeah, where well, Rogan asked her something about it. And she was like, I don't think it's... She might have said something to the degree of like, it's not real or whatever. And Rogan really pushed her on it. But Candace didn't really know a whole lot about it. So it made her look really dumb, right? Since then, she's educated a lot, herself a lot more on it. And still kind of has a similar stance, I think. Just better verse, well-versed, right? So she was on with somebody else. And then the Crystal and Saga were interviewing her. But Crystal was right next to her, asking her most of the questions. And she's the lefty on the show, the attractive kind of, you know, well-built white lady on there. And it immediately turned into a, well, don't you find it odd that there's not a lot of people that look like you in Trump's administration or whatever? And Candace immediately caught her like, why are you turning this about race all of a sudden? We're talking about actual points and policies. And you turn it into a, I don't see people, black people uh, like me They turn it in into office. a representation thing. Yeah. And she's the lefty on the show. And just like they're trained to do, maybe she wasn't trying to do it, but she went right into it. Like, well, don't you want to see more people like you in the White House? Like, I want the yeah. right person in the White House. Yeah, exactly. Le- like Leguizamo. Right. Like, I try to make the point about Leguizamo. He was trying to blame it on, oh, I saw um, Mario and Luigi went all white. Right. You know, the movie got all, the production went all white. And the point I was trying to make is, well, first of all, Leguizamo, you've been in Hollywood, like, what, 20 years? Yeah. How many more. roles have you written? How many films have you produced? You know, how many sc- acting schools, acting classes have you created? Um, how do you get talented kids from the Bronx and the South Side of Houston and, and the Bay Area and San Antonio and San Jose and all these different places to start getting into the arts? Ed, you know, is there like a community thespian program? Is there like an agency that goes out, actively recruits kids from the hood like part of the reason is rare that you see someone like richard cabral in the mayans and shit like that that motherfucker beat a murder case did time all types of shit oh really yeah and he's in the mayans right and he's like killing it in acting it was by the grace of god and a whole bunch of luck that he made it out of jail went in and check this out he and he um he signed up for this um the home what is it called homies homie industries is basically a a pastor uh father boyle in boyle heights he created this thing where he'll teach you how you're fresh out of prison Mm -hmm. all right man look we have a bakery we're gonna show you how to bake that's what he did he was in the bake baker uh program and they're just all working like getting a second chance learning a skill right homie industries and then i guess somebody showed up that was like had some ties to Hollywood, but they were on some hood shit. And it's like, hey, man, they need some thugs and shit extras for some of these law and order type shows because that's the only role y'all going to get is be a little thug in the background. Well, he's like, hey, I'm down. I'm tired of baking all day. And took a couple classes, did a couple auditions, got super deep into the fucking acting world in L.A. Like teacher's pet deep, like yeah. top of the class. And guess what? Started killing it very good at drama stealing the scene um small background roles to like 
we need to put him in front. And lo and behold, he's like uh, one of Hollywood's darlings right now, like on the fucking come up. Wow. And um, my point is this. Was it the Edward James Omo school in East L.A. that he attended to learn? No, that's not a thing. Was it John Logozamo that went and spoke at his middle school and told him to stay out of trouble? No, that's not a thing. You know what I'm saying? Was it, it, it was just by luck. There should be 55 more Richard Cabrales in the motherfucking Hollywood game. Um, so anyway, my point is, here's the fucking point. Stop saying like, oh, don't you want to see representation? Representation matters. Like uh, Lalo Alcaraz with his chancla jokes. Um, you know, he's involved in Hollywood and he's always crying over representation matters. Bitch, who are you helping? Who are you helping to get this representation? Or are you just writing chancla jokes into Coco? Is it chancla jokes matter? <laughs> so stop bitching about representation and look at it from a, like a systematic thing, which is, hey, man. For whatever reason, there's not a lot of uh, casting agencies that even look at these people. Some of these people don't even apply. How many Latinos are there in L.A.? How many of them are actually trying out for roles, going to acting classes? How many of them are going to beat Chris Pratt at being Mario? Like, I don't know. Yeah, man. Leguizamo. It's a business, bro. It's a business. There's probably a lot of other variables besides they didn't pick me because I'm brown. You don't know. It, it's no telling. They probably auditioned all kind of people. Maybe you were in the runnings. Maybe there's a reason you weren't considered for the role. Long story short, they wanted a winning fucking game plan, so they went with Seth Rogen lefty ass. That's crap. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And that's about everything. And people hate hearing this argument too, but it is a business. Like you say all the time, and I totally agree with, whether you're running an actual business like a brick and mortar place or you're trying to make a movie, you want the best ROI on that project. <sighs> yeah. And... Right now is a, is a point in time I think that lefties, liberals, whatever, snowflakes like we call them sometimes, are getting their shot at making it work. Whether it's making sure that there's an all cast of like women Ghostbusters or they're redoing every possible classic franchise with black people or Asian people or all brown people, whatever. If it works and the market says it works, they will continue to make that. If you start seeing more of what was working 10 years ago, it didn't work and the market's not buying it. Therefore, you can keep getting mad at it or you can keep refining your skills to make sure that later if you get another shot at it or you find a way to do it yourself, it will work and make money. That's all that matters. Maybe they wanted a fresh revamp for the fucking Luigi Mario. I mean, there's so many entities involved. Like, who was the casting agency? What did Nintendo have to say? You know what I'm who saying? Who was playing Mario 20 years ago versus who's playing Mario now? How do they get introduced to it now? My kids are half white and half Asian. Like, they're not Mexican, they're not Italian, but they know who Star-Lord is. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, Chris Pratt. So, so anyway, yeah. Legozamo, get off the boo-boo. Stop being a victim, bro. You've been in Hollywood for 20 fucking years. Stop crying racism. How fucking lame do you look right now? Uh, I just want to say it's because I see they went all white. Not everything's about race, you fucking idiot. Yeah. I'm sorry to break it to you. Ain't you like 50 years old? I'd hate for you to make it to 60 and think that the world is still all about fucking race. John Leguizamo thinks he didn't get picked because he's brown. Boy, oh boy. Bless his heart. Oh, he will. He'll get to that. He'll be 60 and still thinking the same. Bless his heart. Uh, the media tries to cover up the... F Joe Biden chant with Let's Go Brandon. So it was an NBC reporter interviewing Brandon Brown, the winner of the NASCAR thing. This shit is money. This is so funny. And then you also told me, as you can hear the chants from the, the crowd, Let's Go Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> Key, is it still playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. As you can hear the chants from the, the crowd, Okay. This is a very interesting one, believe it or not. There's so many ways to look at this. Do you remember the Laurel and Yanny thing? Laurel and Yanny. So basically, man, it was like this brain trick where uh, you could probably look it up later on. Oh, your own time. yes. It was the same time of the dress thing, right? Was it yes. blue dress, green dress or whatever? Yeah, like yeah. what color is this right. dress? And so basically, man, your mind plays tricks on you. Your brain plays tricks on you to where half the crowd is going to hear Laurel. The other half is going to hear Yanni. And it's like, how could you confuse that? How is it possible? 
How is it possible? This is the way the human brain Interesting, works. Interesting, dude. No one's the brought human, that point up. The human brain... Well, I, I think Scott Adams brought it up. and um, Just take credit uh, for some it. Some other people tweeted about it. But there's so many ways to look at it. Because another take, Jack Posobiec's take was... This is a psyop you're witnessing in real time that sh- the, the reporter is hired at NBC because the, she's the type of person that's going to cover on the fly. Like nobody has to get in her ear and say, bitch, cover for this shit. Bitch, you better say they saying, let's go, Brandon, hurry. Like no one had to do that. This is all in real time. It's like people play their position. People play their role. I'm not a mind reader. But you could hear her laughing though too before she says it. Exactly. So the way Jack Posobiec interpreted that laugh, he said it's one of those things where it's like she knows she's lying. It's yeah. almost like they're lying to your face. Like everyone can hear clear as day. Everyone knows what they're really saying. What's the term? She broke the third wall or fourth wall? Um, in a I, sense. I guess, yeah, I guess you could look at it's it. It's almost like if you're watching The Office, right? And like she looks at the camera and like, ha, they're saying, let's go Brandon. And then looks back at Yeah, the almost person. like trying to cover up and lie. Cover up for Biden. Cover up for everything. And lie to the people. Or maybe, I mean, we don't know. We're not mind readers. Maybe she's like nervously in the moment trying to be like, oh my God, they're cussing. Ha 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 ha. Let's go, Brandon. All right, like, hurry up because I'm on air. Dude, to me, and this is just me, she's at a NASCAR event. Right there might tell you who the audience is. It's almost like going to a UFC. We know what happened there. Or the uh, the fight that Trump... College football. College football. Or where it originated, which was the thriller fight that Trump was commentating uh, with whoever was on that fight. I think Anderson uh, Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield. Oh, that's right. That's right. The boxing fight. And that's where it started, right? The FJB? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Word, okay. Did you see that video? I didn't recall it starting there. Yeah, that's where it, I believe that's where it started. It might have been, actually been the day before at a college game, and then he heard it there, or vice versa. But either way, she knows where she's going to. She knows who the demographic is. She probably, honestly, when I saw it, I thought, she planned, what can I say if they start chanting that? Luckily enough... The guy's name is Brandon. The guy's name is Brandon. <laughs> so you're thinking she, ahead of time, before even knowing who the winner was going to be, she find, she was already thinking, how I'm going to cover up just in case. That was just me. Because I don't know how the standings were, but if you were to guess that this guy was already like at the top of like, maybe he's going to win or maybe someone else is going to win, there was probably already an, a, like a contingency of what am I going to say if they start chanting that? And luckily the guy that won this young cat, his name I don't Brandon. know, Rob. That's kind of a reach. I don't give a fuck. I'm just saying that's where my mind went. We're going to call you Reach and Rob nah, today. That's fine. Now, here, here's, here's where you should start getting concerned. If you start seeing all these types of interviews being conducted in a sterile, controlled environment where it's like, and the winner, Brandon Brown, we're going to get with him in about 30 minutes when he comes back here where there's no fucking crowd. And now you're starting to have these controlled environment uh, interviews. Like, mark, mark my words. If you start seeing that, then... Now you're starting, then you'll be able to say, okay, they're really trying to curate the narrative. Uh, and, and here's another take, Rob. Could it be, let's just say hypothetically, could it be Fox News and tr- almost like right wing trolls or even like Trump's paying those people? Like, like, could it just be that it just becomes a trend? Like half the people screaming it don't even, they're just in the middle and they don't really fucking know or care. Or could it be that it's just isolated sections of stadiums and it's getting blown out of proportion on the right? That, I think that's reaching, honestly. So, you would, so you're saying that no matter what large sporting event you go to, arguably 80% are all going to be FJB? 100%. Okay. Because we've seen enough compilations in enough stadiums that are so big. Sure, maybe it's echoing and it makes it sound louder than it is. Or like the social media clip is in that side of in the that stadium. Section. Sure, right. Because that's what Jerry Garcia told me. I showed it to him. I was like, look, man, look what they're saying. He's like, ah, it's just one little area. I love Jerry so much. And I also love when you <laughs> tell me stuff like that because it, it's, it almost like uh, it reinforces my open mind of, of, of knowing that there's people out there that are willing to see things that they know... They're almost like they've taken half of the red pill and they didn't like the truth, so they spit it back out and they took another blue pill. 
because there's some things that are just evident. They're self-evident and you can't ignore them. And that's one of those things. But to say that's actually really open-minded to be like, that's just in that side, man. The whole place wasn't. And then you show them another video and another video. And then you see somebody that's walking around the stadium all the way around. The same thing's going on. Like, well, it's just that one stadium, but not the one down the road. Like, all right, man, that's cool. Well, yeah. Like how much of it is just like a trend? It's almost like someone throws a paper at the substitute teacher, right? And then the whole class is throwing a paper at the substitute teacher. It's like, does the whole class hate the substitute teacher or are they just fucking joining in, right? Right. So this is how I see it. <clears throat> Arguably, this, this is literally my take. Arguably, probably the vast majority of the country is not happy with Joe Biden mm -hmm. because we cannot escape inflation. We cannot escape Biden inflation. You cannot avoid the fact that gas is up, propane is up, natural gas is up. We're no longer energy independent. Uh, the Afghanistan debacle, wide open border. Like, pick your crisis right. as to why you're not a fan of what they fucking sold you, right? Of what Mark Zuckerberg sold you and the mainstream media sold you. So I don't doubt that the polls are real. I don't doubt for a minute that... 60% or the majority of the country is not fucking convinced with this feckless, cowardly, weak, low energy, sleepy ass, creepy ass, can't get a sentence right. Angry old man. Motherfucker. I do not argue for a second with these polls. I feel like they're pretty fucking accurate because of everything I just stated. Now, could there be an element of, well, shit, this year is convenient. Like the longer this trend goes on i mean it just it's almost like it's creating news for fox news right so it's a convenient trend i think it's pretty much organic mm -hmm. but i think it's still healthy to think the way jerry does to an extent meaning okay, I, I agree with like it. in other words like this like the same way we should um the same way we should be critical of all the hoaxes coming out the left like we should still be able to look at a social media clip and use your motherfucking mind look at it and be like are the lips matching was this overdubbed could this have could the sound have been amplified like um is it just a section like is it just a trend um is it just one side of the stadium either way people don't like this motherfucker this is week five i think what week five or six of these chants going on around the country would there be a certain amount of time <clears throat> where this continues that you would just say without a doubt that motherfucker that's being said in every stadium all around the stadium not just in a section that's there's not just an fjb section that is like the stadium yeah i need to see that like i need to see that because because let's keep in mind bro lefties like sports too um they did a fucking number on trump like the media put a Nicki minaj on steroids like made him look retarded stupid yeah. like uh, like a dumb evil incompetent reality tv star hitler Right. They did a bang up job on him. They did a bang up job on the MAGA people. Anybody with the red hat, anybody with America first, anybody saying the border looks like shit right now. So my thing is this, as much as I would love to be like, yeah, man, they fucking rigged everything. The shit got hacked. Didn't nobody like this motherfucker. And it's like I see I, I don't see a lot of them. Every once in a while, you see a Biden Harris sticker on a fucking scooter or a Prius. Like they're out there, yeah. <laughs> so, for as for as much as you as for as much as you can hear this loud chant, arguably there's still a good portion of the country that it's a normie. They not paying attention. Biden inflation hasn't hit them yet. Dollar Tree hasn't turned into Dollar Fifty Tree yet, and they're still fucking blind. So, yeah, there definitely is because enough people. If you just take whatever the mainstream message is. And I think a lot of people are just starting to come to this conclusion. And I've said, I said weeks ago, I was like, if I don't see enough definitive evidence that we're starting to decertify and turn anything around, then you have to just go with the enough people hated Trump to vote against him, not necessarily vote for Biden, but as they say, Trump was, uh, what was it? He was voted, however the phrase goes, enough people just hated him that they voted for the other guy. It's not that there was a pro-Biden, there was just an anti-Trump, that's yeah, what it is. That's it's true, because what did Biden run on? All Biden said is this, uh, I'm going to listen to Fauci. Uh, I'm going to build back better. And I'm not going to tweet mean things. That's that's it. He didn't say, hey, guys, we're going to fucking do this. We're going to do that. We're going to drive down inflation by doing this. Here's our economic policy. We're going to tariff these people. No, it was just, I'm going to listen to Fauci because Trump didn't, supposedly. 
even though he pretty much did everything fucking Fauci said. I'm listening to Fauci. I'm a build back better, and I'm not gonna be Trump. Yeah, I'm, I'm not Trump. I'm not Trump is basically the that's main it. Thing. I'm not Trump. Uh, green, green was was one of the things like going green, you know, anti oil and coal and all that, and uh, uh, not mean tweets. It's kind of it. He got y'all. He got y'all. He he tricked y'all. He said I'm not gonna be Trump, and then the media did the rest. Yeah, congratulations. You played yourself. Hold this L. Congratulations. We, we have a ton of other topics to get to. We're going to shift over to the premium episode. We've got to take a potty break or anything because we got two more shows to do. Okay, so uh, so we still rolling or we cutting? No, we're we cutting. This oh, is it. Ending. If you we're want ending. more, you got to go to the Patreon on Friday. For sure. Sign up. Go get the bonus episode. And the um, FJB shirt. This whole like last 15, 15 minute rant has just been a promotion for that shirt. <laughs> hey, like I said, man, I try to play devil's advocate both ways, but I do have FJB shirts for sale. If you are one of the people that like to participate in the chant, uh, it's a fun chant, and arguably we still have freedom of speech. I don't know if my PayPal is going to get taken away. Don't I don't say know that if, out loud. No, listen seriously, bro. Like one of the news sto- stories we're going to cover on this next episode is the Department of Justice has asked the FBI to investigate mothers who go to. St- uh, school boards and argue against uh, what they're teaching the kids, whether it's like sexual stuff, pornographic stuff, critical race theory stuff, uh, 1619 type shit. So, if they're going to go after stu- school board moms, yeah, they can come after anybody. I, All they got to do is label you a domestic terrorist. I got to say this, this is a perfect time to say it. If you are buying, hear me out everybody, stop what you're doing and listen. If you're buying one of the FJB shirts or anything on shinglebling.com, People are running into the issue with the payment processor, actually. Okay, what's going on? Half of them are getting a cannot purchase, cannot complete purchase. And I'm getting DMs at the at my at Rob G TV, like, hey man, I'm trying to buy the shirt. I'm trying to buy something on, on chingabling.com. So I went in and I, I did a test code to, to mock a purchase that wouldn't charge me anything because you know I get stuff here, I get the hookup. But you have to choose PayPal, even if you're not paying with a PayPal balance. Let's say that you get the message that says, cannot complete purchase. You got your card numbers right, it's not expired, you got money, you got the address, everything matches. And you still get cannot complete purchase and you get the red little bar. Try again, use PayPal, but if you don't have a PayPal balance, or even if you do, but then insert your credit or debit card number in PayPal and it should work. And it won't work always, excuse me, if you just try to do it on Squarespace through the payment processor. So again, use PayPal. You don't have to use a PayPal balance. You can choose to use credit or debit card and then it'll go through. We might have to relabel these shirts Brandon t-shirts or something. Let's go Brandon like on the website just to see if this little error goes away. Because if you live in Russia, can you make F Putin shirts? Like, is that allowed? Do you want to die the next day? I'm just saying, like if you live in China, can you say like F the CCP shirts? Do you want them to melt you with acid? Um, so in America, can you sell FJB shirts? That's the million dollar question. Uh, are we going to have to go back out the trunk? I don't know. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget, man, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales, or at the very least go to chingobling.com and sign up for the newsletter right now. I'm hella shadow banned and we trying to work around it, but, uh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Take care and I'll holler at you later. Peace.